Hi everyone. I've been selling a lot of the merchant navy decoders recently and nobody really knows what speaker to buy with it so a lot of people have been asking. Uh, so luckily somebody sent this model uh, that needs sound fit into it and I thought whilst I've got it up and then whilst I'm looking at it myself I'll do another quick video where I show people what I've used. Uh, so to save a bit of time I've already disconnected the tender. Um, and I've already taken the screws out of the tender, but this is where the socket is on this one with it being a newer model. So there's a screw at either side of the coupling, just quite small screws, um, which I've taken out already. And then it unclips, it's held by clips at the front, which I've already undone, and then it just pulls away. Um, these tenders are designed to hold a 27 or 28 millimeter round speaker underneath there. Um, but I don't really like using them because I don't think they bring the best out of the model and um, they really need to be used with an enclosure and uh, you won't get an enclosure in, there isn't enough space so it won't be airtight and it won't sound its best um, so there's a couple of different options one of the options is to sort of get rid of a bit of the plastic underneath that's sort of the the bit that holds the round speaker and you can just about fit one of these under the weight which is the Base enhanced 26 by 14 by 7, I think that is, um, and that'll fit underneath the weight and point out at the bottom. Um, but I've had good results with these recently, which is the ultra flat base enhanced speaker, and I think this is designed for a tablet really. Um, I can imagine it would sound quite good if it were playing music and stuff. Um, it's just that sort of speaker that's got good clarity and quite a bit of bass for its size. Um, so I think that's probably what it's intended for. Um, but I think that'll fit there, facing downwards. Um, it doesn't really add much height. And then I think the decoder will just sit across the top of it. So that's what I'm going to try first. And if that all goes to plan, that's what I'll end up using. So I'm just going to go and quickly solder this speaker onto um, onto a decoder. And then I'll try and fit it. Right, I'm back with the decoder and the speaker's connected to it now. So I've just used a little bit of heat shrink across the joints and to make sure that nothing gets shorted on the chassis. And I'm going to put the speaker in with a bit of black tack, but you only need a tiny bit. One of the things that people do wrong with black tack is they use too much of it. Um, you you really do only need a small amount, so I've just broken off a small piece and I've just sort of stretched it across there, and uh, I'll do the same at this side. So that should be enough to hold the speaker in place. So that's just gonna go it that way around I think. If, it, if you look at the speaker there's a little, this is kind of a bracket that's probably designed to hold it into something but that fits quite neatly over those two screws. It's a bit out of focus but over them screws I think that's probably a, a neat way of doing it. So that just pushes on and that's nice and secure now. Still facing downwards and still facing through the hole um, but yeah, it gives you a flat surface then to connect your uh, decoder onto. So, pin one is this corner, because it's marked with a little arrow. So that's the orange wire, if you're ever in doubt. And then it's just a case of getting this stuck down as neatly as possible. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that I've already tied the wires for the auxiliary functions and the stay alive out of the way. Uh, if you intend to fit a stay alive, you're probably going to have to be even more creative with the space that's available. You might even have to look at um, putting it into where the coal is and covering it up with a coal load or something. Um, but it's quite a big model, so you probably don't really need one. Um, but yeah, decoder-wise, you just want to... So I'll do the best you can, um, getting the wires out of the way. And 
what I'll do is hold it down with a little bit of Captain Tape because it's heat resistant. You really don't want to use black tack to hold the decoder down because you don't want the black tack getting hot and melting. Um, I'm not sure what the melting points of it is, but I don't think it's that great with heat, so it's just something to be conscious of. But Captain Tape's really good with heat, so you're, you're fine using that on the decoder. Um, obviously people use it for insulating as well. But yeah, that's basically it. The uh, decoder sat on top of the speaker and tapes down. Now, I'm hoping that the body will go back on. Um, but I haven't tried it yet, so we're about to find out. Clip the front in first. Okay, I'm back now with my tweezers, so I can finish it off. So... Yeah, I've already got the front sort of almost clipped in and I'm just going to line up the the bottom of the handbrake lever with the hole that it has to push into. That's it. So that's clipped at the front and it's back down at the back so looks like it all fits okay. So I've just got to put the two screws back in now. So I've got a magnetic tip screwdriver which just makes it easier. And these are available on website. I actually do a kit with the magnetic tip screwdriver, some captain tape, um, some heat shrink, some black tack. Um, so that's quite useful if you don't already have one to do these kind of jobs. The speaker's on there as well obviously, so I'll put some links below like I usually do. Now I'm going to go and fit the um, fit the tender back onto the loco and I'm going to run it round and do a quick video of it running so you can hear what it sounds like. But yeah, thank you for watching and if you've got any questions just leave them below.